Hi everyone, my name is Karen, this is my channel Rather Be Reading, and today I'm bringing to you my January Marked As To Read video. If you guys have watched my last couple of Marked As To Read videos, then you know in recent months I haven't been marking as many books as to read as had become the norm, which is a lot. So the numbers had been a lot less in the past couple of months. That is not the case in January. I marked 32 books as to read in January, which makes sense because going into January you get a lot of anticipated videos and just lots of lists about anticipated reads. So you hear about a lot of new books in January. So I marked a lot as to read. So let's jump straight in, talk about all of the books that I marked as to read on Goodreads, where I heard about them, what they're all about, why I'm excited about them. Let's chat. The first book I want to talk about that I marked as to read in January is Hunting Annabelle by Wendy Hurd. This is one that I heard about in a Goodreads blog post. You're going to see a lot of different Goodreads blog posts. If you guys don't read the Goodreads blog, I would highly recommend you do because I hear about so many books through those blog posts. So this blog post was just one of their ones that they release. I don't know if they do it every week, but pretty regularly they release um, a post about books hitting shelves like coming up in that week I think generally that it is and so Hunting Annabelle I was so intrigued by the plot it's about it's told from the perspective of a killer but so he's been in jail um we know that he's killed several different women and he's released from prison and he is determined not to kill again however he then meets a girl named Annabelle and he is very tempted by her I believe that he then forms some kind of relationship with Annabelle. However, then Annabelle goes missing and he sees her taken and he's convinced that she's been kidnapped and he tries to go to the police about it, but the police think that he's involved, obviously because he is a killer, like he's been in jail for killing people. Um, I'm just so intrigued that we're reading from the perspective of someone who has murdered people in the past but is trying not to be a murderer anymore. Very, very interesting. So then I have three books that I heard about in another Goodreads blog post. This one was just a post that they did about the highly anticipated books, the Goodreads highly anticipated books. Um, so like the books that Goodreads were saying were going to be great reads of 2019. So I have three that I heard about in that post. The first one is The Silent Patient by Alex Michalides. Um, This is a thriller. It sounds so intriguing. There's this husband and wife who seem to have, have had a pretty good marriage. However, one night the wife shoots the husband in the face five times. She then never speaks again. And I believe we're um, reading the story from the perspective of a criminal psychotherapist who is speaking to the wife who murdered this husband and trying to find out what has gone on. It just sounds so intriguing. I think it's going to be very like psychological in nature, which I'm very into. Um, the next one that I marked from that um, blog post was another thriller, and that is The Mother-in-Law by Sally Hepworth. This one is about a woman who has a very kind of strained, distant relationship with her mother-in-law. Um, and then I think she's been married to her husband for several years, like I think it's about 10 years, when her mother-in-law dies, and it seems to be a suicide. She's left a suicide note. However, the police then discover signs of suffocation and everyone in the family has some kind of secret to hide. So, again, very intriguing. You guys know I love a good mystery thriller. And then the third one that I heard about in that blog post was actually Shout by Laurie Hulse Anderson, and I was so, I'm so interested in this book. Shout is Laurie Hulse Anderson's poetic memoir, and it comes from the perspective of, if you've read Speak by Laurie Hulse Anderson, then, which is an own voices story from the perspective of being a sexual assault survivor, um, Laurie Hulse Anderson has spoken about that a lot. And apparently this book is inspired by her feeling like not enough or anything at all in some respects has changed in the world surrounding sexual assault survivors and the way that the world views sexual assault in the 20 years since she published Speak. And this is her... I think talking about that in the context of her own experience as a sexual assault survivor, which just sounds, I really like the book Speak. It's a book that I've always really, really loved. Um, and I am very intrigued to hear more about Laurie Horse Anderson's own personal feelings on the topic. I just think that's going to be very powerful. Um, we then have six books that I heard about in yet another Goodreads blog post. This one was a post they did all about their, um, the biggest mystery thrillers coming out in 2019, which obviously I was very interested to read because as I've mentioned already once in this video, I love mystery thrillers. So the first one that I heard about in that blog post is called The Au Pair by Emma Rue, and it's about 
um, this, this, these twins are born and on within an, I think it's within hours. Yeah. Within hours of them being born, their mother throws herself off a cliff and their au pair flees. And when that happens, obviously the town starts to speculate on these twins and all of that, you know, speculate on everything that's gone on. It's then, I think about 20 years later and the twins father dies and they go back to their childhood home. Um, due to his death and while packing up the house I think they discover a photo of their father and their mother and I think their older brother I think it is holding one baby and then it's about um them trying to unravel the secret of what has gone on like in their past it just sounds very 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 intriguing the next book that I saw in that blog post is called Forget You Know Me by Jessica Strauser this one is about two childhood friends um they've been friends for years and years however their relationship over recent years has become a bit more distant and they're trying to reconnect and so they have this video chat and while they're on the video chat um one of them leaves the room to see to her children or something like that and the other woman witnesses something um during the video chat and she races to her friend's house but when she gets there her friend is very cold very distant and it's just about that story. I was very, very intrigued by that plot. Um, the next one is The Night Olivia Fell by Christina McDonald. This one is about a woman whose teenage daughter um, has fallen, or maybe not fallen, from a bridge. And she is brain dead and pregnant. And so they need to keep her on life support in order to save the baby. Um, and the police rule that the um, that it's an accident, her falling from the bridge, and I think it's just about um, this um, girl's mother trying to find out exactly what has gone on. Very intriguing. Um, the next one is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. This one is about a group of friends in their 30s who every year, it's kind of a tradition for them all to get together on New Year's Eve, and on this particular year, they all go to um, an idyllic and isolated Scottish Highlands estate, which sounds amazing. They get snowed in, and by the second of the year, I think it is, one of them is dead. Um, so again, this one is giving me... I mentioned this in another video. There was another book that I mentioned this, that it's there's a lot of books coming out at the moment that give me vibes of An Unwanted Guest by Shari LaPena. I really enjoyed that book, and I really love those oppressive, closed-in kind of closed door mysteries like with Agatha Christie type vibes and this one definitely gives me those vibes so I was very very intrigued. Next we have a book called My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. I'm gonna read you the synopsis of this one because the synopsis is not very long and super 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 intriguing. It says uh 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 our love, is, our love story is simple. I met a gorgeous woman. We fell in love. We had kids. We moved to the suburbs. We told each other our biggest dreams and our darkest secrets. And then we got bored. We look like a normal couple. We're your neighbors, the parents of your kids' friends, the acquaintances you keep meaning to get dinner with. We all have secrets to keep a marriage alive. Ours just happens to be getting away with murder. So I presume it's about a couple that murders people, and I'm very intrigued by that. And then the final one that I heard about in the blog post for the mystery thrillers is I'll Never Tell by Catherine McKenzie. This one is about a, it's a, a family who runs this camp and there was a girl who was found bludgeoned to death in like a boat on the lake. And it's 20 years later and the now adult children of the owners of that camp, um, the parents have passed away and in the will, it is stipulated that in order for them to deal with the estate, which they really want to do because some of them need the money and there's a lot going on, um, in order to deal with the estate, they have to solve the mystery of what happened to the girl who was found bludgeoned to death on the lake. Ah, I'm very intrigued. It's got a lot of buzzwords in there. I love mystery thrillers, but the fact that it's set at a camp very, very much intrigues me. Next, I have four books that I heard about from Lisa over at Books and Smiles that she talked about in a series of favorites videos that she did for her favorite reads of 2018. So there were four that I marked from those videos. The first is The Lies We Told by Camilla Way. This one I've seen kind of going around booktube a little bit. It's a thriller. Um, it's about a woman whose boyfriend goes missing and then his sister who has been missing for 20 years, reappears at the same time. Um, I don't really know too much about it apart from that, but the fact that Lisa mentioned it as a favourite was good enough for me. And the next one that I had is The One by John Mars. 
This is a science fiction-y type book that is set in a world where uh, by testing your DNA you can get matched with your soulmate. That has come with a lot of complications because it has torn apart a lot of marriages and things like that. Like if you're already married to someone and then this, you know, capability becomes a thing and you're DNA gets tested and you realize that the person you're married to isn't your soulmate, so on and so forth. Um, but I think, so it's set in that type of world, but I believe it's a thriller, which is very intriguing to me. The next one I have is The Distance by Jeremy and Hilary Robinson. This is one that is, I think, like a post-apocalyptic, end-of-the-world type story about two people in two different locations who have both survived this, like, apocalyptic, you know, event. And I think it's about them journeying, or at least one of them journeying to the other to try, like, be together for, like, because the world has ended and they're basically the only two people that they know of who have survived. Um, the final one that I got from the Lisa's Favourites is Vox by Kristen Delcher. Again, this is one that I've heard kind of going around, but I wasn't sure whether it was something that I was interested in, but now that it's one of Lisa's favorites, I'm very interested. So again, this is science fiction-y in nature, and all I really know about this one is that it's set in a world, like a dystopian type world, where women are only allowed to speak no more than 100 words per day. So it's obviously a society where women are very repressed. I don't know too much about it apart from that, but the fact that it's one of Lisa's favorites intrigues me. Next, we have one that I heard about from my friend Mel, previously of That Girl Bookworm, who is no longer making videos, which makes me very sad. But she talked to me about a book um, that is called Seven Days by Patrick Senecal. I don't actually really know what this is about, but she um, had heard about this book because apparently Patrick is described as being the French Stephen King. That's good enough for me. The next book I want to talk about is Agatha Christie by Laurie Thompson. This is one that I heard about from Brian over at Brian's Bookshelves, and it's just basically a memoir of Agatha Christie. And I realized that I don't really know anything about Agatha Christie, and I read a lot of her, and I really enjoy her books, and so I thought this would be a really interesting read. I have heard it alluded to in the past that there's something mysterious about Agatha Christie's life. I believe there's a period of time where she disappeared, and no one is really sure kind of what went on in that time, and that's very intriguing as well, so I just thought that this would be a really interesting book to pick up. Um, next, I have a bunch of books. I think there are four that um, Lala talked about in her favorites video, and Lala's one of my favorite booktubers, so I wanted to read them because she raved about them. The first one is I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek Schreier. I believe this is nonfiction, and it's from by a trans woman who is basically just talking all about masculinity and how that has been forced on her throughout her life. I think I'm probably simplifying that a lot, but um, Layla, oh, Layla, Lala had really good things to say about it, and I just think it sounds um, like it will be a really powerful read. Um, the next one of Lala's favorites is Blanca and Roja by Anna Marie McLemore. This is a YA fantasy slash magical realism story that is about two sisters who have always been kind of each other's rivals and. Their family has like a curse on it where they know that at some point one of them, I think they have to do some kind of magical trial or something, I'm not really sure, but one of them is going to eventually be trapped in the body of a swan and one of them will remain a girl. I think some boys get pulled into it, I'm not really too sure. I've heard very good things about all of Anna Marie McLemore's books and I've never read anything by her, but I was very intrigued by this one. Um, the next one of Lala's favourites is Dead Mountain, the untold true story of the dial to Dietlov Pass Incident, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, by Donny Eicher. This one is another non-fiction, and this one is about nine hikers who died um, on in the Russian Ural Mountains. Um, and this is not necessarily something that I would normally expect that I would enjoy, but Lala has talked about this book a lot, and it just sounds very, very interesting. I believe it's a um, incident, like it's obviously a real-life incident that is very mysterious and not many people really know what happened. And I think Lila mentioned when she talked about this book that she believes that the perspective that is given in this book, like that it's basically been solved, that this is what has happened. And that intrigued me. Um, and I just thought it sounded really, really interesting. And the last one of Lila's favorites that I marked as to read is Girls Burn Brighter by Shoba Rail. Um, this one is about two um, Indian girls who have a very, very um, like intense friendship, like a very strong friendship bond. And I think it's about something that tears them apart and about them coming back together. Um, it is 
obviously about Indian girls, which I think is very interesting. Um, and I have heard pretty positive things about this. I think it's an adult literary fiction book, but um, Lala really, really raved about this book, and so I thought I'd give it a go. Next, I have a book that I heard about um, in Vanessa over at Paper Fairy. She did an anticipated um, reads video. Um, and she talked about The Dead Queen's Club by Hannah Capon. This is a YA retelling of Henry VIII and all of his wives set in like modern day high school where, you know, Henry is like a popular boy and it's about all of his girlfriends. And I believe it's told from the perspective of one of his girlfriends who is also his best friend, which just sounded really intriguing and I feel that's going to be a fun read. Next, I have something that I'm so excited about, which is a Buffy comic by Geordie Belair. I first heard about this um, from Penelope over at Penelope's Picks, and I don't know how I'd never heard about this. Um, I believe it's coming out this year, and I think it's literally just a comic of the Buffy story, like the existing Buffy story. Uh, I want to read this so bad. The cover image is just, it looks so good. I really, really, really want to read this. Um, the next um, book that I have, I've heard a couple of different people talk about, and I can't remember where I first heard about it, but it's Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. And this is a YA LGBT romance between two boys. One is who is the US president's son, and the other who is, like, the Prince of England. That sounds freaking delightful. Um, next, I have a book from another Goodreads blog post. This was another one about anticipated 2019 reads. But I, rather than this one being, I think, like Goodreads selections, I believe this is one where they looked at 2019 releases that people had been marking as to read. So we took those to be like the anticipated ones. Um, and the book that I marked from that list was Save Me from Dangerous Men by S.A. Elchuk. Lelchuk. Um, this one sounds so intriguing. It's a thriller type novel, but it's about a private investigator, a female private investigator, which already, yes please, but she tracks dangerous men, men who have hurt women that they are supposed to love and teaches them a lesson. And then I think it's about her getting caught up in some kind of something going on and about her being on like the run or something. I don't really know, but the fact that she's a female PI who is tracking down and punishing dangerous men sounds so intriguing. Next, I have four books that I heard about um, from Cece um, over at Problems of a Book Nerd. Um, she did a video all about the her anticipated YA queer books of 2019. So the first of those is Hot Dog Girl by Jennifer Dugan. Even just the title and the cover of this book is so intriguing. This is about a girl who gets a job at the Magical Castle Playland as a giant dancing hot dog. And she has a crush on a boy there who plays, I think, the pirate. And, however, he already has a girlfriend. I think the vibe I get from the synopsis is that maybe she's going to fall in love with either his girlfriend or her best friend, who also works there, who I think is a girl. I'm not really sure about the cover and the title. I was just so intrigued by this book. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. The next one is Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki. I believe this is a graphic novel. I really enjoyed Mariko um, Tamaki's previous graphic novel. I didn't enjoy her novel so much, but this one is a graphic novel, and I believe this one is about a toxic relationship but between two women. Um, which I'm just very, very intrigued about. I really enjoy reading about toxic relationships, but particularly in a female-female. I don't think I've read anything. All of the LGBT relationships that I've generally read have been, like, light-hearted type romances, so I'd be interesting to read something a little darker in that kind of area. Um, the next one that I have is The Lost Coast by Amy Rose Capetta. This one is about six queer witches, and it's set amongst the California Redwoods. I don't know anything about it apart from that, but that sounds very intriguing. I love witches. I'm going to love queer witches, and I'm certainly going to love it being set amongst the California Redwoods. So very excited by that. Um, in a similar vein, we have These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. And again, this one's about witches. This one's about a girl who can control the elements. So she can, contra can, can, can control air, earth, air, wind, and fire. Um, and it's set in Salem, which is also very intriguing. And I think she has an ex-girlfriend who is also a witch. And something happens with some kind of blood ritual or some kind of blood magic happening. And witchery, witchcraft is witchery. Witchcraft is starting to be exposed. I don't really know, but it's got witches in it and it's queer. It just sounds very, very interesting. And then I want to talk to you guys about The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. 
Have you heard of it? I have been very much a snob about The Cruel Prince and I haven't wanted to be interested in it purely because everyone else is raving about it so 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 much. And I was weakening on my stance and then Mel, um, who I mentioned previously, um, recommended it to me and said that she thought that I would really like the like romantic parts of the story that she thought that those like elements of the story would be right up my alley which I agree with what I've heard I think it would be I don't know why I was being such a snob about it and so I finally gave in and added it to my um, want to read list because everyone is raving about it at the moment with the release of the sequel so I've given in in case by some miracle you've never heard of this book it's a YA fantasy about um, the fae or fairies and I think it's about a human girl who her parents have been murdered and then her and her siblings are taken into the fae world but they're not treated very nicely because um, humans are considered like lesser. I don't really know too much about, about it apart from that but like I said everybody 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 raves about these books. Next we have the book that my real life friend Emma, hi Emma, talked about and she messaged me, I think she saw it in a bookstore and she messaged um, me and asked if I'd heard of it and I'd never heard of it and then I looked it up and it sounds so intriguing. It's called The Binding by Bridget Collins and it's about a world where there are bookbinders and a, um, I think we follow a male character who is becoming a bookbinder and bookbinders it's where they like bind books to hold memories so you can erase a memory um, or like save a memory or whatever I guess in these books and it's very like secretive and there's a lot going on with that and then I think it's about him uncovering lots of secrets to do with that. I don't really know but that whole concept of there being books and like saving memories in it just sounded very very intriguing and I was intrigued so I marked that one as to read. The next book is one that I heard about from Karen over at Run Right Reads which is pretty in Punk Satorni. I know I'm mispronouncing that. Um, this is a YA story which is Pretty in Pink meets Groundhog Day and it's about a girl who has moved to a new school and she's starting her the first day of her se senior year of high school and she has to keep repeating the day over and over. I was already very intrigued by that premise um, and the fact that I heard about it from Karen um, over at Run Right Reads who reads much more like literary fiction and non-fiction type of reads um, and so for her to talk about this book and say that she really enjoyed it really intrigued me and that plot just sounds right up my alley. And then the final book that I marked as to read in January is Tall Oaks by Chris Whitaker. This one I heard about from Carrie Ann over at Woman vs. Books. Um, and this one is a mystery story set in a small town where kind of everyone has a secret. Um, and I think the main mystery that we're following is surrounding a three-year-old boy who has gone missing. That's all I really know, but Carrie Ann had positive things to say about it and I was intrigued. So those were all of the books that I marked as to read in January. I know there were so many books in this video. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below if you've read any of these books or if you're excited for any of them. I know that most of these are 2019 releases, so probably not many of them have been read. But if you're excited for them too or if I've piqued your interest on any, I would love to chat about that down below. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. That is all I have for this video today. Bye, guys.